When the girl that you love plays against you, you can probably imagine that she's going to end up in hell. The liars of the force like to play by to see if they can pass you, but the truth is God doesn't think they're so well. In life we have moments of time to speak the truth, and the truth to one person may not be the truth to another, but here's the reality, little shits. You send your police officers, your sheriff, to carry money, and I guarantee they will fail every time. You see, the best test of any employee for any company is to pick out someone you see regularly who's in struggle, always around the same area, which lets you know that they have some sort of heart situation or some way that they can't make it on the double to anywhere else. And openly, what I'm saying to you is ask one of your favorite employees, or not, to carry, hand carry some money to them and see if they make it by sending a follower that they've never seen before in their lifetime to basically follow behind and see what happens, see what transpires. What you'll discover is that the courier will fail, will keep the money, or will try to bail, or will try to insult the person by buying food for them instead of just handing them the money. In life, we have moments of time to check a courier service. And if you want to check an employee for a courier service, you do the same thing. You ask them to deliver something precious. And money is pretty precious to people. It doesn't have to be a lot of money. It could be 10 or $20. It doesn't have to be a lot. The question is, will the money get there fully intact in the amount that you sent? And then you send someone after to either inquire to the person gently and respectfully, because frankly, it's none of the stranger's business, but at the same time to watch the transaction go down and see what happens. You see, women of the force who are big and overweight and have kids in the old heterosexual way like to fuck all over someone who's got a special needs issue that's none of their business anyway. Then you send your marvelous police officers in their incognito, oh so fancy, summer wear, and what you end up is wanting to tell them, why don't you go grow a pair? You see, my face is mine, but for some fucking reason, you bastard gay men of the military or the force think that my little face is your little Picasso place. And it's not. And the more you take off my beard, I guarantee the more that God is going to kill your family through COVID. But here's the deal. You think you've all got the shot, but you might just have the placebo. You see, a way that a president gets rid of illegal, immoral people might be with disease. But at the same time, the disease that's plaguing across the world is a great subterfuge or camouflage for taking care of people that are trying to kill our world. In life, we have to speak military, not at all, but what we know from marvelous writers of Japanese works is that you want to keep your friends close and your enemies closer. But in the world, America has lots of enemies, and so do Americans. The problem is that they've moved themselves into our land, and we are not pleased with that. We believe in this live and let live, but not everybody does that, and the truth is, in today's world, we have to be careful of human trafficking. And the thing we have to be careful of most are the people that are supposed to protect us from that are actually engaging in that. I'm quite concerned with some of the places that are storage units underneath buildings and apartment complexes that maintenance men have the keys to that openly could end up taking a hold of some college girl, drugging her with some sort of CBD oil or giving her some sort of pot that's been laced and then she's out like a light. And that old fucking maintenance man who's all on drugs and hopped up on weed like Jamie and other people, and I apologize for keeping using that as a simple name, but you know what? I'm pissed off. I have a face that belongs to me, I have a body that belongs to me, and no fucking police officer has a right to tell me what I can and can't do with my motherfucking body, especially when I have a crew, meaning I had a wife, I had a child, and I have grandchildren overseas, and I don't need you fucking touching me, you fucking faggot. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth. We can scream the truth. We can yell the truth. We can holler the truth. But the truth is, these people don't care. These religious right people just don't give a fuck. They want to believe that they have rights to people that are total strangers. These Catholic wenches think that they've got rights to a man who's not their husband. These black bitches of a neighborhood think they've got the right to call somebody a bitch, even if it's no good. And the truth is, you just sit there and look at them and go, who the fuck raised you? And were you raised in a fucking barn? And you just can't believe it, that in today's age, after all the incredible uh, African-American, Negro, colored people, however you want to politically correct that uh, descriptor that we are supposed to put down in terms of 
whenever we do some sort of a evaluative survey of some company, some restaurant, some whatnot, it's just a descriptor. It's an adjective. And bottom line is, when you when you write that down, what are you describing? Not the point of my talk. The point is that you thought you were going to enslave somebody in that regard. You've made yourself into a slave. And you thought you were going to impress upon people not to be ethnocentric and not to be discriminatory, but what are you doing to fix that? You see, there's incredible people that came before you, Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, and all sorts of people whose names that I can barely pronounce because I'm not a part of that community. But I absolutely know that there's a marvelous library in Indianapolis that can teach me all that. But at the same time, I was a kid that was, grew up sort of empowered and sort of embellished with having to watch Roots every year that came on. Because my father wanted us to understand where we came from and how far we've come as a nation and how far we must go to keep people safe from this discriminatory way of people just thinking that they can walk into a community or walk into a place and just blast people up with their guns and that's not okay. The Second Amendment allows us the right to self-defense but there are white men and white women and colored people and Hispanic people and Russian people and all kinds of people here illegally and immorally who don't want to give you the right to say no and don't want to give you the right to fight back and don't want to give you the right to self-defense which is the second amendment and openly then we lose some of our important people in our lives and that's not okay in america we have rights to know how to protect ourselves i've been pretty impressed in the last week with a woman that i didn't know was officially on tv in one of these uh, big brother type shows for spies but what i've been impressed about the most is her interviews about her work in the cia not at all but in the in the security task force that protects the president. That stuff is really off the hook. That's impressive. And anybody who can speak Spanish and Chinese is pretty impressive. But that's not my point. The point is that self-defense and self-protection in America is a citizen's right. And the truth is we shouldn't have to need to be safe from police or safe from FBI pissing all over our life or safe from satanic sheriffs who think they have the right to steal our property and our possessions just because they feel like it. In America, we have the right to be safe. That is a fundamental expectation, thankfully, still in most places. But there's always a bastard group of Satan from every community of every nation and every tribe and every ethnicity that just doesn't want to allow that. And those people, frankly, don't belong here. Because America is supposed to be about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And the pursuit of happiness doesn't involve being shot mutilated, molested, or raped here. In America, we have time to speak the truth, and it is time to move people who don't belong here back to their own nation, where they can screw up their own countries or decide to grow up 